In this video, we're gonna take a look at using the toolbar inside of our Quasar Framework applications. So let's make a new application and head over to hello.view. That's inside the source folder and then components. Let's remove everything inside of this file and make ourselves a new template and a new script. Inside of our script, we can export a default object, but we'll leave this blank for this moment. Inside of our template, what we want to do is make a new q-toolbar. And inside of our toolbar, I'm simply going to give this a title by using the q-toolbar-title. Inside of the q-toolbar title, we can give it the name of home. This could potentially be the homepage for this component. And of course, therefore, we're displaying a contextual toolbar saying home. After which we need to import the toolbar inside of our script. So the way that we do that is by saying import from Quasar. And the things that we're looking to import is the Q toolbar and the Q toolbar title. Inside of our default object, what we need to do is specify these components by saying components and then pass in the Q toolbar and Q toolbar title once again. If we save this and look at our application, we can then see that we have this toolbar on screen. The toolbar does say home. And of course you can customize this to say whatever you want. The toolbar is currently blue and that's because the main color is primary, but we can, if we wish, select a different color. For example, on our toolbar, we can add the color equal to secondary. And instantly you will see that we do get that standard green with the secondary color palette inside of our Quasar applications. We could do everything from positive to get that bright green info, to get that light blue and so on. We do have other options with this. I'm gonna copy this toolbar and we're gonna add it again underneath. And I will surround this inside of a div but this time we'll make the toolbar inverted. So we can add the word inverted to our Q toolbar. But in this circumstance, you can see that the toolbar still takes up the same amount of space, but instead of the background color being blue, it's the text that is blue. And of course the background color is white. If we wish, we could also add a subtitle to our toolbar. I'm gonna to add it to the initial toolbar that we created. Inside of here, I'm gonna make a span. And the way that we add a subtitle is by adding what is known as a slot. And this is used on content inserted into child components. So the slot that we're gonna be pushing in here is known as the subtitle. And this will be my subtitle. So if we take a look inside of our application, we have the home, which is denoted by the Q toolbar title and underneath that new subtitle that we just created. We can do the same for our inverted toolbar. And when we do the same for the inverted toolbar, we do get the same effect, but of course this time it doesn't have a background color. Another thing that we can do to change the appearance of our toolbar is to add what is known as a glossy effect. I'm gonna copy this and paste it once again, just so we can see the difference. And I'm gonna add it on top of our current toolbar. And we're gonna use the prop glossy. If we simply add it after the color. So you can see that the toolbar does now have a sort of glossy effect with the shadow underneath. So this offers a variety of different styles for your toolbar. We can also add buttons to our toolbar. If we simply head back over to our script, we can elect to import a Q button and of course add it to the components that we wish to use. And then inside of our toolbar, I'm gonna to use the glossy one at this moment in time, we can also add a button. So let's add the Q button. This one can simply say hello. And inside of our toolbar, we therefore have that button. Usually though, it's a good idea to only add icon only buttons to our toolbar. So let's have a look at how we can use an icon inside of our toolbar. This time I'm going to add the icon to the standard block toolbar. So underneath the title once again, and this time we'll need to head back over to our script and import 
what is known as the Q icon. Let's add the Q icon to the list of components. And let's add the button. But this time inside of the button, we can add a Q icon. And the Q icon that we'll use, we can potentially use something like the gamepad. Why not? We should also add the button attribute of flat. And when we take a look here at our toolbar, we can now see that we do have this button. So the button this time is flat. And obviously when we click on our button, we do get that nice ripple effect. So that's about everything that wraps up the toolbar inside of our Quasar Framework applications. If you have found this useful, then of course hit that subscribe button to stay updated. Let me know what you think inside of the comment section below. And of course, don't forget to check out paulhalliday.io for more courses, free content, and other awesome articles. Until next time, my name is Paul, and I'll see you very soon in that next video.